right, now I'm going to receive messages through the SMS module there. Before I receive messages, I need to get myself a SIM card. So I've done that. I've gone out and got myself a SIM card, and I'm going to plug that into the SMS module. When you get a SIM card, it'll also come with a mobile number, and it'll be unique for the SIM card. So plug the SIM card in now. It's important for this particular device to insert it like this. Very good. So that little cut or the angle is at the top and it's popping out like that. It's easy to put it in the wrong way. And if you put it the wrong way, you'll have problems. But anyway, that works. Now I'm going to connect it. Right now, the red 5 volt cable is not connected. So I'm going to connect it now. Okay, so that's connected. And we can see it flashing once a second. If all is correct, that flash will slow down to once every three seconds, which has happened. So I have no problems with this, but you are likely to have problems with this the first time you do it. So I'll show you some of the commands that you can do. So SSH onto your Raspberry Pi, like I have, and open up Minicom again to the correct device and the board rate there. That works for my device. Okay, so ATI describes the model. You can also write ATI plus GMM. That also describes the model. Now, my SIM is working. I can check that by checking the network setting, AT plus COPS, question mark. This tells me my network setting. Zero, zero, Vodafone, that's good. So if you're still having problems here and you're not seeing a network name written in this response, then enter COPS equals zero. This will set it to automatic mode. If it's one or two, then that's possible as well, but just set it to zero so that it chooses the network automatically. So I'm not going to do that because I already have done that. Another thing you can try, AT plus C fun. Functionality, one. That means it's on and it's fully working. You can reset the device by doing C fun equals zero, like that, AT plus C fun equals zero, and that will switch it off. C pin not ready, okay? And then you switch it on, C fun equals one, and if your SIM card is valid, you'll see C pin ready, and then a few moments later, SMS ready, and then call ready. And that tells me that the SIM card is good. You can see in the background it's blinking once a second for a while there. Now it's blinking once every three seconds. Okay. Another one you can do, you can check your signal strength, AT plus CSQ. Okay, signal 16, that's actually not very good. If you're in the 20s, that's much better, but actually... 16 is okay for me. I do have a signal. I can check my available networks. I already am connected, so I don't need to do this, but AT plus COPS equals question mark. That will tell me the networks that are available after five seconds or so. There we go. Vodafone, Voda UK, T-Mobile. Now that's different from before when I said AT COPS question mark. That shows me my setting. Equals question mark tells me the available options. Okay, now I can get the status of the SIM card, ATCSCS question mark, it says IRA, that is International Reference Alphabet, that was the default, I don't need to change that, but that answer for you could be GSM or ISO, could be several options there, but you can select that to be IRA or GSM by saying ATCSCS equals GSM, for example, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it as it is. Okay. ATC reg question mark. This will tell me about the registration status. Zero 01. My SIM is registered. That was zero 03. You'd have a problem. Your SIM no longer works and was denied registration. Okay. When your SIM connects, you should get a service center number straight away. CSCA question mark. And right now, that's the service center number for the supplier of my SIM. And that is Labara. And I got that for free in the UK. And Labara uses the Vodafone network, according to this response up here. Now, because I've got a telephone number, I can now send SMS. So I'm going to send an SMS using my mobile phone. I'm going to send a test directly to the telephone number listed on this piece of paper. Radio, I sent Hello World. There we go. And down here, CMTI SM1. So there is a new message received there. So we can read that. We can type ATCMGL listing all. I have an error. Let's try that again. Still an error. 
let's try ATCMGL because one is okay. I haven't got my SMS in text format. So I need to set the format to text mode. So ATCMGF equals one. That is now in text mode. If I write ATCMGL equals all, it tells me at CMGL one, there is an unread message from that telephone number at that time and date. Hello world. Right. I can send another one. I sent ABC equals one, two, three. There we go. It's told me there's a new message at position two. So ATCMG all. It's listed both messages now. There we go. I can read an individual message. ATCMGR equals one. That shows me message one. That shows me message two. I can delete those messages. ATCMGD for delete equals one. Now if I list all again. I'm highlighting that and right clicking and it writes it down the bottom there. It just shows me for message number two. I can delete number two. There we go. And let's read all again and there's nothing there. Okay. So I'm now able to receive SMS through that SIM module and read it directly in my Raspberry Pi. Now the benefit of doing this is I can unplug this pink cable down here. This Ethernet cable. And I can still send messages to my Raspberry Pi. And if I was reading those messages using a script such as Python, which I'll demonstrate in a moment, I can trigger certain actions such as restart a system or run a certain kind of script that does something else, or even send an SMS back to me about the status of some value within the Raspberry Pi, such as the Raspberry Pi temperature. I can get that status by sending an SMS. So I'll demonstrate reading messages using Python now. So I'm going to exit Minicom here. So that is control A, press Z to get the menu, press X, exit, and then press enter to confirm that you're leaving Minicom. Okay, very good. Now I've written a Python script and I have Python 2.7 on my Raspberry Pi. I can get that by Python hyphen V. This Python was already installed when I installed Raspbian Buster, but if you don't have it, you can install Python. Okay, so I have a script and you can run it, sudo python read sms.py. And what this is doing is using Python to read the messages. So the first thing it's done is loaded profile zero, ATZ, CMGF, set the format to text, ATCMGOL equals read all messages. And there's nothing there. So I'm going to send a message now to my telephone number and read it in Python. I'll show you the Python script in a moment. Okay, so I've sent the message and we'll see what that message was. Okay, sending to Python script. That's what I sent. So every five seconds, this Python script will show you all the messages that it has in its memory. Another message being sent. We'll see that in a moment. Cool, another message. There it is. So I now have two messages in my SMS module that I can read. And I can delete those if I like. Now for the Python script, I've put this on GitHub. There'll be a link in the description. This is written for Raspberry Pi. So sudo apt install python pip, sudo pip install pi serial. And then that's the command I used to start it. And this is the script, read sms.py. Uses time serial phone equals serial dot serial device tty ama 0 11500 timeout one second. You can set that to five seconds if you like or something else. Phone.write atz slash r. That's like control m in minicom. Phone atcmgf equals one slash r. Parage return. Phone read all. While one. This is the loop that runs every five seconds. Phone.write cmgl equals all. And then data equals that. And then we just print the data. So that's the script at its most basic. Now you can scan that data using Python and if there are certain kinds of messages from certain numbers, you can use that to trigger a new event, such as I could say reset system. And if that number was from the number that I tested on in this script, which I haven't in this script, but I could, then I could trigger another action. That's Python programming now and this video is not really about Python programming in depth, so showing you that there is starting script for you that you can use.
Okay, now I'm going to exit the Python script. I'm going to press Control C. Now that's exited. Now I'm going to go back into Minicom and then show you a trick so you don't have to press Control M to enter every command. So go back into Minicom. Okay, if you press Control A, press Z, there's an option down here to add a carriage return U. So if you press U, you can now press, for example, an AT command like ATI and just press Enter rather than pressing ATI control M. Pressing enter is not enabled by default so what I just did was enable the ability to type a command AT for example and press enter to execute it. Excellent. So the next video I'll show you how to send an SMS using this SMS module. So thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and share.